Well, one of the most exciting and challenging and often desired to study and know from everyone I've met is the book of Revelations. When I rededicated my life back to the Lord, I had watched uh, the movie The Omen and there was a quote of something that when the comet rips the sky then that will be the end of you and I. And I could never find that in the Bible. But that's got me to study the Bible. <laughs> and uh, a great hunger uh, occurred. And then my rededication to the Lord. Uh, the Word of God began to penetrate my heart. I, knowing the Lord as a little one all the way up and in fact, I never forgot the Lord. We just quit walking with the Lord as a family. And individually, one by one, the Lord began drawing us back. So I get the appeal of the book of Revelation. Especially when times are tough and something looks like it might be from the very book of Revelation. You know, the mark of the beast is the, oh, the rage in those people's thinking and there's a concern and a need to know about uh, what the Bible says concerning such but I understand that if you're if you're a newborn Christian newborn babe this is a tough book if you're not a Christian you've never truly been born again by the Spirit of God and have that indwelling presence of Christ within the hope of glory then you're going to really struggle even more because you're not going to have the wisdom and the understanding that's required to take on any more challenge of trying to understand the Bible. You might get some things to glean from it. The Bible does have uh, aspects and words that strike the heart of even the unbeliever and can begin the transformation work. See, we're born again of the Spirit and the Word of God. And uh, God works in His Word. And Jesus is the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. So to understand the book of Revelation, I always have people wanting to study the book of Revelation. And I always have to take them to this kind of a, a course. This is updated. And this is recently um, because there is such uh, a clamor to understand. First of all, know that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ that John received on the island of Patmos. He was in prison for the gospel. He was paying for his obedience. And so to understand this last book that uh, is found in our Bibles and, and we need to understand something about John. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day when the revelation of Jesus was given to him. And from this revelation of Jesus there were things that were revealed uh, besides our Lord, but he is the, the central theme of this book. If, if you don't get that, you miss it. See, the whole Bible starts in Genesis with God creating, speaking the word, and that one would come and destroy the devil. So from Genesis all the way through Malachi of the Older Covenant, this is all leading up to one person, Messiah, Jesus. And when Jesus uh, was here, and after his resurrection, he went back and showed them from the scripture, and from the prophets, all these things pertaining to Christ, the Messiah, and his suffering, and the things of God. And so then the New Testament teaches us again about Jesus with clear revelation from the Old Testament and then how to live uh, for our Lord and how to um, live and work together. Because the two great commandments that we have is to, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our might, with all of our whole being and soul, and to love others as we would like to be loved. Paul and I, all the rest of the scriptures and the prophecies hang. We've not been called to be lawless. 
Jesus said, don't think that I've come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So we are people who are walking out the fulfillment. Our salvation isn't our works. Our salvation has been given by Jesus. But once we're in Christ, he that abides in me and I abide in him. Because of yourself, you can do nothing. If you're a part of him, you will produce fruits and good works. And if you're not, uh, you will be removed. Well, read that yourself in the scriptures and the testaments that Jesus gave us in John and other gospel markings. But it's a result of that relationship of his saving power, who he is, our life, that we're transformed. You know, you can say you love your spouse, but if you go out cheating on your spouse, do you really love your spouse? No, not really, I don't think. So, if you're in love with the world and the things of the world, and you just want to know the book of Revelation so you can kind of maybe escape something, and you know, and that's, that's not the book to begin with. You can read it through. I recommend everybody read it through at least once in their lifetime and uh, study it uh, after they've truly come to know Jesus Christ. So, here we have this revelation of Jesus. And he's going to reveal himself to the church and what the church is doing wrong. And then some things that are going to come about until he comes. So there's all kinds of arguments about the book of Revelation. Is it just allegorical? Has it already come to pass? Is it uh, for the church today? And so on and so forth. And there's arguments. Many arguments. Often this is, the book is called Revelations. I've said it a few times too, the book of Revelations. But it, it isn't called Revelations. But there are many revelations in it. The revelation, the main emphasis about Jesus Christ. And who he was and who he is and who he shall be coming again. According to God's word. And it's this revealing of Jesus. And then there's revelation about what's going on in the church. And then there's revelation of things that are happening in heaven. And revelation of things that are going to come upon the earth. And the revelation of the end of days. And the new establishment of Jesus' kingdom. And so on and so forth. So there are many revelations to be found. But the book is not revelations. It's revelation. The book of revelation. And that's just because... You're going to have people get upset with you if you call it revelations. But there are many revelations, that's to be sure. Like we said before, everybody wants to study this book, it seems like. Even unbelievers, new believers. And anytime there's like we're in this, this turbulent time right now, it looks like we might be seeing this end of days uh, begin to play out. But I really want to caution anybody here, before you try to get into this wonderful book and, and, and understand it and get them and glean from it what God wants for you, it's important that you hear what the Spirit is saying. So if you don't have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, you're not really going to understand the, the book of Revelation. So first of all, we need new birth of our soul and our mind. We need to have our mind renewed uh, that we may receive the spirit of truth. Jesus said the world cannot receive the spirit of truth. It just can't. And so if you're of the world and you've got a mindly uh, mindset of the world, if your world viewpoint is about the world instead of to the kingdom of God's viewpoint, you're not going to get the spirit of truth and really understand what God is saying throughout most of the Bible. In fact, it could be very confusing. Like you say, if you're honestly hungry and seeking, the Word of God will work on you. But to get the full benefit of trying to understand this, first of all, uh, we need to be uh, birthed by the spirit of truth and the Word of God in order for us to understand this important and challenging book. And if you don't know the written word of God, the Bible, uh, you need it to help interpret 
the book. Uh, you, you know, the reason I don't like to just spend a lot of time teaching on the book of Revelation is because I don't want to add to or take from, because there's a curse for adding to and taking from. And it's the same really for the entire Bible, not to add to his word nor to take from his word, because those things bring dire consequences into our life now and in the life yet to come. So I really want uh, people to have a basic understanding. You don't have to have a PhD in theology. Just enough of the knowledge of the Word of God and who God is and what He has to say from Genesis all the way up to the book of Jude so that you can understand Revelations a little bit better. And even then, People who have great knowledge of the Word of God are often conflicted when it comes to this important book that God has given us. So the scripture tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want wisdom? You need to have a proper fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord gives us knowledge and to depart from evil is knowledge. So if you're going to still live in wickedness and sin, you're going to limit your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. And part of the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And so that's why we repent. We find out we've been doing something wrong. We, we go to God and we tell Him that we've done that. And we're asking for His power and grace to help us change our course and walk with Him and not walk with the devil or the, our lustful flesh. So without a proper fear of the Lord, you can't begin to understand the book of Revelation. And it's still hard to understand anything else in the Bible. So there's a lot of passages that talk about uh, the fear of the Lord. And I put up about maybe 15, 20 of them real quick. So that you can kind of get a few moments here. I, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll leave this up for a few moments as we get talking. Uh, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you're a fool that despises God and his word, uh, you can't begin to have knowledge of God. Uh, you're just going to be void and foolish and, you know, bullheaded, thickheaded, and calamity's the end of you. And the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way and have a forward, proud mouth. God says he hates that. Oh, God hates evil. He hates pride, arrogance, proud mouth, hateful mouth. So be careful what you say. Jesus said, don't fear the people who can kill your, the body, but fear the one who's able to uh, kill your soul, destroy your soul and body in hell. That's God. Man might kill your body, but man cannot kill your soul. You do that by choosing to reject God. And then God will destroy both the soul and the body in him. And again, Ecclesiastics from the wisest man who blew it even though he had great wisdom. He said, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Because he said, all of life, everything about life is vanity. Vanity, vanity. Everything is vain and empty and it all perishes. Amen. So the final conclusion is, fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So we need to know that as we begin to fear the Lord and respect him and understand there is consequences for violating his kingdom and his principles, then as we let that fear of the Lord be our restraint, as we are disciplining our flesh and our old ways we walk out this wonderful grace of salvation with fear and trembling that we don't want to just uh, alienate God and put a, a blockage uh, talk many times about that sin will, will block us from God we won't be able to see or hear God on our behalf and um, you know if the whole earth could but fear the Lord and stand and knock and we'd have a wonderful world to live in but not everybody does so if you want life if you want to escape the snares of death you need to fear the Lord <clears throat> our fear of the Lord gives us confidence and 
as his children, we shall have a place of safety of refuge. So a lot of people are trying to understand Revelation so they they uh, can maybe escape things or find refuge, but it's the fear of the Lord that does that for you. And Moses told him in Deuteronomy, Now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all of thy soul. No ha hazard, you know. Ah, when I feel like it, I'm going to praise you. When I feel like it, I'll pray. When I feel like it, I'll read the Word. When I feel like it, I'll go to the assembly of the body of Christ. No. All that you have, do it. So, as we look at that, we begin to understand, if you want to understand the secret of the Lord, He'll show you when you fear Him and love Him and respect Him. But if not, you're going to try to be wise in your own eyes. And you won't make it. Don't be wise in your own understanding, your own way. Well, I don't think God would, you know, that's foolishness. Don't be foolish or wise in your own thinking of what you think God should do or shouldn't do. Who are you? You didn't create all this. You didn't take and uh, make a way when there seemed to be no way. God's ways are higher than our ways. We are but miniature little children who are just getting glimpses from the written word of God. So we need to ask the Lord to teach us that we may walk in truth and have a truth and, and, and a proper fear of his name and respect unto his name. Because without that, we do not have a complete life. Yes, God loves us. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's also holy. And he's a God who hates sin and wickedness. And he wants us to depart from evil. He wants us to become holy. Come learn of him. She said, come learn of me. And we're to learn of our Lord and become like him and walk like him. And there's great mercy from generation to generation. There's no want to those who fear the Lord. God will take care of all your needs. He says, uh, fear not, I'm with thee. Don't be dismayed, for I am thy God. I'll strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And as the proverb says, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. He that has it shall abide this vast. He that does, he shall not be visited with evil. So take some time and look at those and ponder them and pray and talk to God. Another prerequisite, though, is a personal relationship with God. You can't come to know God in His Word if you don't have a, a personal relationship. There's a lot of people who have knowledge about God in His Word. It's head knowledge, and that's not the same as a relational knowledge. But if you have a personal relationship and you begin to know about God in His Word, that's a powerful combination of a healthy spiritual life and it creates healthy relationships here on the earth as well with other people. So just having the knowledge of a, a counselor doesn't make that person a good counselor with, with his own family. I've seen that. It's only when something's worked within us then other things can have value as we add to that relational knowledge. So unless you're abiding in Christ, are you doing what he says to do? Are you following him? Are you obedient to the word of God? Are you allowing the spirit to lead and guide you? And part of this is the, the time. We need to have time for God to talk. If I don't take time to talk to my wife or to my children, our relationship can deteriorate. Devoted time, time that belongs to him. The Sabbath, you know, that's his day. To spend time with him and let him renew our body and our mind and our spirit. We need to know the Bible. We need to read it so we know what truth is versus a lie that is thrown out at us. Because there are many deceiving spirits that have gone out, but we're to test the spirits. How do you test them? By the written word of God and by the spirit of truth. So all of these are the important aspects of a good relationship. So without spending time with other people, you don't really get to know them. Well, the same is true. If you don't spend some time with God, 
then you're not really going to have a deep relationship and you're not really going to understand it. So you're going to be hit and miss. And there will be a lot of pollution in your mindset and your understanding. Because you're going to try to make the Word of God come to make sense to your viewpoint, to your brokenness. Instead of letting the Word of God transform you and see things from His kingdom perspective, from His viewpoint. Very, very important to have a true abiding relationship in Christ. Jesus said, you can do nothing of yourself unless you abide in me and I abide in you. So, here we are. I'm going to bring it down to this. The Holy Spirit of all truth. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and comfort us. He'll lead us and guide us. He will teach us the things of God. He's not going to be talking about himself. He's going to talk about Jesus. He's going to talk about the... The Word of God, He's going to lead and guide us into all truth. Remember, when John wrote down this revelation, when he received this revelation, he was in the Spirit on the dedicated day of the Lord. Interesting. So we need to be Spirit-filled and walk in the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about being born again by the Spirit, I'm talking about the book of Acts. They said to seek out for deacons, to find some deacons that were men that were full and filled full of the Holy Spirit. Well, if we all had the Holy Spirit, why are you putting that emphasis out there, apostles? And those that have a good report within our community and without. They really live it and people see it. They really know that they're being led of the Spirit. They're really walking in the Holy Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, we're not going to be fulfilling the lust of the flesh, according to the Apostle. But where God says, you know, to crucify the flesh and live by the Spirit, the Spirit of peace and love and joy and kindness and gentleness, long-suffering, you know, if those aren't, you know, full in our life, that book of Acts being filled with the Spirit, being empowered with the Holy Spirit, that's so vital for us today, and it seems to be a missing aspect in most people's life. They have a head knowledge about this, but they've never experienced that oneness with God through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there are a lot of people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They might have had a touch and got some goosebumps and might even have used a gift of the Spirit, but are they filled with the Spirit, and are they walking in the Holy Spirit? See, if we are in that relationship with God, coming into looking at the book of Revelation may still be somewhat difficult because you have to study. You need to look at some of the things in the Old Testament because there's a lot of things Daniel spoke about that John and Ezekiel spoke about. And so there's some revelation and understanding that breaks forth. And I think God limits a lot of people full understanding so they don't get puffed up with head knowledge so, you know getting a lot of knowledge uh, can make people puffed up and proud but if you're humbly seeking God to know what he's trying to tell us it's important to know who he is in the first chapters and then why we're at what kind of uh, church believer are we what kind of person am I of those seven churches which one am I more like? Which one do I need to change from? Have I lost my first love? Have I got my life polluted with things that I shouldn't have? Am I hot, cold, or lukewarm? See, get that first part down and, and work on that. And then coming into reading the rest of Revelation and praying about it and studying it will be much easier. You may not, like I said, you may not glean and get every ounce out of it. But I truly believe that as you read it, and as you meditate, and you ask the Holy Spirit, He'll give you what you need to know for the moment that you're in, the time that you're in, and for preparation ahead, and help lay out a foundation so that He can continually let the revelation unfold with understanding, so that you walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit, and not in just head knowledge. You see, that's our sin. The sin that Adam and Eve had is they wanted the, the book of, the, the tree of knowledge. They wanted knowledge. And a lot of people want knowledge out of Revelation without having the life-giving relationship. 
And that's why we have so much confusion, I think, and why we have so many different churches and so many different denominations and so many ideas about the book of Revelation. So start today with this prerequisite, I pray. Take the time to look into your own life and align it with God. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. And, and if you're not a believer that has been born again and filled with His Spirit, ask Him to do that for you. If you're a believer that there is a God, you do well, but even the devils believe in God and fear and tremble. But that doesn't do any good because they're not obedient to him. And they haven't allowed him to rebirth them. And I don't know if they can be. I doubt that they can. But then again, that's going to be up to God to deal with on the a plane that's outside my preview. I want you, where you are in my preview from the scripture, that unless one is born again of the Spirit of God, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God and you cannot enter into the understanding of revelation without being born again. And if you've got pollution of sin and immorality and doubt about God or anger at God or blaspheme, you're going to be very limited because he that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So, work out your part and let God work out his part. And then together, let's go enjoy the book of Revelation as the Lord would have you understand. This is Pastor Dan praying that you get to understand more and more about our Lord Jesus than about the mark of the beast or the end times. You need to know some of it. But unless you know Jesus, know him personally, none of the other parts of the book matters. So get to know Jesus. Spend time with him, I pray, and make a relationship worthy of a marriage.